Well, hello there. We're back to old rhizopus and how rhizopus reproduces. It involves this structure right here, a spore producing structure. It's called a sporangium. Don't have to know that. But it produces spores. Where are the spores? They're inside. We saw this in an earlier picture. Lots of little guys inside there. A lot smaller than I'm representing here, but lots of them, and they're all called spores. All right, our, our introduction to spores here. And so, uh, what happens? How do they get out? Well, at some point, the uh, covering kind of dries out and cracks open, and the spores go floating off in the breezes. And there may not be many breezes. Uh, if you have a bread box, maybe it's the breeze created when you open the box or you rustle the uh, bag that the bread's in and whatnot. But the spores go are released, and they go floating off, to uh, another piece of bread maybe. And so, I'm not an artist, but I am going to attempt to draw, or attempt to represent a piece of bread. Just in case it's not recognizable, I will label it bread. And so, the spores land in the bread. And what do they do? They germinate. The spores germinate is the general term. And what does that mean? That means they produce more hyphae. Kind of like the parrot hyphae here, they produce more hyphae, and uh, those hyphae have nuclei. Uh, and so, what by what process do these spores produce these new hyphae? The same process that's, that uh, produces the parrot hyphae, so to speak. Uh, it's uh, what is that again? Mitosis, mitosis, what without cytokinesis? Yes mitosis without cytokinesis. So that's what's going on here, mitosis without cytokinesis. And, uh, and uh, what's the, what are these hyphae doing in this piece of bread now? What are, they, what are they up to? Well, they're up to the same thing the parent hyphae are up to. Uh, they're decomposing the bread. How do they do that? Well, they produce what again? What do the hyphae produce? digestive enzymes they do and so they digest the bread and absorb the digestive material that's how that works and so rhizopus is spread from one piece of bread to another this is reproduction now is it uh, sexual or asexual reproduction let's hold that thought for a second and let's talk about spores a little bit more first and uh, so we have these spores what is how many cells big is a spore? They are single cells. They each have a nucleus. And what are the nuclei? The same as in the uh, mycelium, except now cytokinesis has produced individual cells. And so they're all N as well. N, N, N. These are all N. Every nucleus in this picture is N. And so let's, uh, before we answer that question, uh, about whether this is sexual or asexual reproduction. Let's jot down the three characteristics of a spore. There's a question. What are three basic characteristics of a spore? So let's write that down. A spore. And this is not the last time we'll be talking about spores. We'll be talking about them the entire rest of the semester. And so a spore is how many cells big? How many cells big are these? A spore is a single cell. A single cell. Secondly, they have a nucleus. And what's the chromosome number of that nucleus? It's haploid. One haploid nucleus. One haploid nucleus. All right, that's the second thing we can say about a spore. And when the spore is landed, they, they germinate. And germinate means mitosis, right? And so. Uh, spores are reproductive cells, but they reproduce by mitosis. And so uh, that's different than another reproductive cell we've talked a lot about, gametes. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll compare them in another, another unit, another module, another lesson. Anyway, spores reproduce by mitosis. They reproduce by mitosis this thing right here, mitosis. That's how that spore is reproducing by mitosis. 
sometimes with cytokinesis, sometimes without. In the case of rhizopus, it's without cytokinesis. All right, back to the question. Is this sexual or asexual reproduction? And I always put a student on the spot in class. But what's the answer? I can't do that with you. Uh, what's the answer? Sexual or asexual? Well, it happens to be asexual reproduction. What does that mean? Reproduction without sex. Yes, indeed. And how do we know it's asexual reproduction? Well, if it was sexual reproduction, what would we see someplace in this picture? We'd see fertilization, zygote, all that stuff. Any fertilization here? No. Any zygotes? What's the chromosome number of a zygote? 2N. Are there any 2N cells in this picture? No, there are not. So, this is asexual, asexual reproduction. Rhizopus has reproduced going from one piece of bread to another by means of these spores floating and then the spore floating in the breezes and then germinating on the other piece of bread. Asexual reproduction. Now, does rhizopus have sexual reproduction? Yes, rhizopus does. We're not going to cover it in this class, but yes, rhizopus uh, has sexual reproduction as well, but this, not in this situation. These uh, little round things, these spore-producing structures, they function in asexual reproduction as we see here. All right, that's it.